Okay, in this segment I will talk about compressibility of fluids. And before I discuss this, let me explain where I'm coming from. I said that when we were discussing the density, the density of liquids can be taken as constant and the density of gases is variable with respect to pressure and temperature. So for that reason we said that liquids are incompressible, gases are compressible. So the question is how compressible? I didn't really quantify it. This is not like a digital signal where it's one or zero. There's in between, this is more like an analog signal, right? So I have to analyze this from this angle. So the compressibility is basically, it's a measure of how the volume of a given mass It's called of a fluid changes with respect to pressure. It's characterized by bulk modulus. And this is E sub V. And sometimes I see capital K as well. And the formula is minus dp by dv by volume. Okay, so this is kind of interesting. Is not is my notes not correct? Why do I have a negative sign over here? So I want to have a positive back modulus. So what's going on in here? Well, here's what's going on. When I increase the pressure, what happens to the volume? It gets lower, right? So as it gets lower, dv will be negative value. So from here, this will be a negative number. The rest of two are positive numbers. So I'll get a positive number at the end. That's why I have a negative sign in, in front of the box modulus. Okay? So that's why the negative is. What's the unit of it? I usually like to ask my students about this. What's the unit of things? What is the unit of d volume by volume? Okay? So one thing is there is the, the mathematical symbols such as integrals, derivatives, they, don't, they do not have any units. Okay? So what is the unit of this? Unit less, right? And what is the unit of pressure? It is force per unit area. So F L minus 2. So and if I'm using SI, so then this is going to be Pascal's. And if I'm using British gravitational, then this will be PSI, pound per square inch. Good. Gases are highly compressible. Liquids, on the other hand, we talked about this, are incompressible. So what do I mean by liquids are incompressible? So what will happen to this EV value? Is it going to be a very small value or is it going to be a very large value that characterizes the incompressible? Well, let's take a look here. I said that this dv is a negative number. But if it's incompressible, it doesn't mean literally not compressible at all. It means there will be some approaching zero in a negative direction. So what will happen to this? This is a number, this is a number, and this is zero. What happens to 1 over, or rather minus, 1 over minus the value? Well, we'll go to a very large number. The very large bulk modulus numbers indicate that this fluid that I'm dealing with is incompressible. So for gases, if I pick up the gases over here, Let's look at how the compression or expansion takes place. If compression or expansion, they are reverse of each other, right? If this is taking place under constant temperature, constant T, pressure is changing, but the temperature is constant. And if you remember from your thermodynamics, these are called isothermal processes, right? And what will happen is, from the ideal gas law, or perfect gas law, what you will find out is P over rho will be constant. Because P is equal to rho R T. T is constant, R is a constant anyway, so I get myself P over rho constant. Okay? So this is not the only way of having a compression or expansion. Let's look at another version of it. If I have a compression or expansion, and this time around, it is frictionless and I have no heat 
exchange with the surrounding. So basically what I'm saying is I have a frictionless system, think of the piston going up and down, and it is completely isolated and there will be no heat exchange with the surrounding. And if you remember from your thermodynamics, I call this isentropic process, right? And again, you may remember this from thermodynamics courses, but in this case, this is characterized by P over rho to the power of K is equal to a constant as opposed to isothermal, well, the K is equal to 1, basically, the way that it's been set up, right? But this K over here is characterized by Cp over Cv. And K, let's write it here, this is something new, maybe specific heat ratio, right? So every, per, every material has one. For instance, air is 1.4. Cp is the specific heat at constant P pressure. And Cv, as you can imagine, it will be specific heat at constant volume. V stands for volume, not velocity, okay? And I said that for ideal gases, E is equal to rho RT, and there was an R, which is a constant, right? And actually, this is Cp minus Cv. So they're all connected. One other thing I want to highlight before ending this segment is there's some the Mach number, and I will talk about this in module 10 down the road. And this is defined as this way, M is equal to V over C. C is the speed of sound. The C was E sub V, the bulk modulus for density, and if you remember also this was KRT for isentropic process. You can review your notes from thermodynamics about these things. Okay? But what happens is C, the speed of sound in air, you may know this already, 343 meter per second. I'm talking about 1 ATM. Obviously, I need to be specific about it. And if I'm looking at the liquids or water, I'm going to get 1,481 meter per second. This is for water. This is for air. Okay. Now, why am I introducing this to you now at this point in time? Because the compressibility effects only play a role when Mach number is larger than 0 0.3. So I can simply go ahead and neglect the effect of compressibility. So let's write it in here. If M is less than 0 0.3, you, it's, it's safe to assume compressibility effects are negligible. Note that I'm not saying that they are not there, they are negligible, they are not as important. But if I'm dealing with m is equal to half, 0 0.5, then I, I really do need to account these. But note that the velocities that I'm dealing with in here are fairly large, okay? Let's take this. 343 meter per second. So if I go ahead and convert this into mile per hour, just to give us an idea, it's about 760 mile per hour. So 0.3 of 760 mile per hour, right around 230 mile per hour. If I'm lower than 230 mile per hour, then I simply can go ahead and neglect my compressibility effects. So this may be okay for some cases, but if I'm if using for airspace applications, this comes into the play, obviously.